Okay, we continue our series, uh, Understanding and Obeying the Ten Commandments, special series for small groups. This is lesson number nine in the, this uh, series. Uh, we're going to cover commandment number seven. So let's take a look at the commandment itself. In Exodus chapter 20, verse 14 says, you shall not commit adultery. You shall not commit adultery. Here the word adultery refers to sex uh, outside of marriage, sexual activity outside of marriage. So this command was needed because the, uh, the human sex drive uh, is an extremely powerful force. Some uh, people feel embarrassed or perhaps even ashamed for merely having the need for and the power of uh, the sex drive uh, within them. But of course there is no need for shame because that's something natural, something that God has built into us as uh, human beings. We need to understand uh, rather how God wants us to direct this force within us so that we can use it in the way that He has designed and not in the way that it has been perverted by sinful, sinful men. There are of course two extremes to avoid. Uh, first of all, uh, extreme Puritanism, uh, where sex and everything connected with it uh, is seen as uh, dirty or base or unworthy somehow. That's one extreme. The other extreme is extreme worldliness, where sex is everything where the uh, stimulation and gratification of our sexual appetite is the focus and our, the primary goal of, of, of everything we do. The Bible teaches us the proper use and role of sex so that it can be enjoyed physically and emotionally and spiritually to its uh, greatest uh, potential. You see, it is possible to be fully satisfied uh, sexually as uh, human beings, as men. Uh, some might uh, not believe this because it's, uh, it's uh, never happened to them. Uh, they always uh, want more, men especially, uh, always want more, or they want something different, or they want something newer in their quest for sexual satisfaction. Um, to be full uh, sexually, however, requires that we obey God's commands in the Bible concerning uh, human sexuality. Uh, no one ever became sexually satisfied uh, sexually at peace with themselves unless they obeyed God's will in the matter of uh, human sexuality. For example, I take a well-known example, Hugh Hefner, uh, the publisher of uh, Playboy. He, uh, he died in 19, uh, uh, 2017. Um, and uh, if you read about him, you find out that you know, he slept with uh, three blondes, you know, uh, 20-year-olds, uh, when he was in his 80s. Uh, he used uh, Viagra uh, to help his sexual uh, performance, uh, but his uh, actions uh, didn't uh, convince me that he was satisfied or that he was content or at peace uh, sexually. Actually, his conduct pointed to a, a pathetic old man who searched uh, for a sexual fix that 50 years of uh, gross sexual immorality um, uh, failed to, uh, to give him. Um, now, there are three basic rules that form a, a kind of a triangle which sex is blessed, uh, within which sex is blessed by God and becomes a blessing and not a curse uh, for us. Uh, first point, sex is for the enjoyment of a husband and wife within marriage only. Uh, marriage uh, is a legal covenant between a man and a woman to live as husband and wife for life. Uh, not any other combination, not a man and a man or a woman and a man, a uh, woman and a woman, not two men and one woman, uh, three people, six people, those may be called marriages today, but they're not marriages according to what the scripture teaches. Um, uh, without the legal component uh, of uh, the relation, uh, without the legal component of marriage, the, re the relationship is not considered a marriage in God's eyes. Remember, society considers marriages you know, according to the courts or according to uh, society, but here we're talking about what does God consider uh, marriage? And so for God to consider a relationship marriage, there has to be the legal component. If it's not a valid marriage in society's eyes, it's not a valid marriage in God's eyes either. Um, a legal covenant of marriage is accepted and blessed by God regardless of the culture or the religion. Marriage is blessed by God and so uh, is the sexual intimacy within uh, that relationship. 
And so God created sex to be the unique and exclusive right and pleasure of individuals who entered into a lifetime marriage agreement uh, with one another. So that's the first uh, uh, component uh, as far as sex is concerned. Uh, second of all, sex comes after marriage, not before. Now, it isn't the sex that you share that makes you married. It's the covenant or the contract that you enter into to live as husband and wife that makes you married in God's eyes. You're married when you say I do and sign the papers and not before. The honeymoon is the, is the privilege shared by married people, not the thing that makes them married. Otherwise you'd be married to everybody you ever had sex with. So sex before marriage or sex with someone who is not your marriage partner is sin in God's eyes. Uh, the first is called fornication, the second is called adultery. Both are deadly in, 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 in building a good sex life within marriage. Uh, studies confirm that people who live together or have sex together before they marry are twice as likely to encounter marital problems as those who don't. Remember, you can't be completely fulfilled sexually if you disobey God's rules about human sexuality. After all, he's the one that has created human sexuality. And so his rules about human sexuality um, are the ones that lead us to uh, uh, fulfillment. And then the third uh, rule about sex contained in this commandment, God blesses sex within marriage. Now, within marriage, the couple is free to express themselves sexually without fear or, or shame. Some people, you know, they have trouble accepting the sexual freedom that God gives them within marriage. Uh, human sexuality is, is complicated and it's mysterious. E even Solomon said that it was one of the few things that he could not quite understand in Proverbs 30 uh, verse 19. The exclusive and lifetime nature of marriage gives a man and a woman the confidence and the time to explore their own and their partner's sexual character. The only instructions about sex within marriage are that it should stay within marriage and that the partners should strive to satisfy each other, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, uh, and we have to work out in our marriages what that means exactly for each individual. Okay, so how do we keep this commandment? First thing you need to do is decide that you're going to keep it, decide that you're going to obey. So many times this is where Christians or those who want to be uh, Christians fall away. Uh, they can't believe that God wants them to experience sex with only uh, one partner, only within marriage, and that once they marry, they'll have, sex, they'll have sex only with that person for the rest of their lives. It doesn't work like that in the movies or on TV, even, even in our families. Remember, God wants you to be sexually fulfilled and He knows how to do this better than you do. Decide that you will do it God's way, not only because it's His will and it's right, but also because it will ultimately lead you to sexual peace and happiness. We are called out of the world as Christians and this includes what the world thinks about the issue of human sexuality. Uh, you know, uh, monogamy is God's revealed will for human sexuality. Uh, left to his own desires, uh, a man invariably uh, pollutes and degrades human sexuality. I mean, if you look at the Old Testament, you know, the Sodomites, the Canaanites, you know, their worst sins uh, revolved around uh, human uh, sexuality. Number two, if you're, if you're single, um, realize that you're an easy target for Satan. When you're single, you have a difficult sexual burden to carry in order to remain pure, according to this command. The lack of intimacy and affection and encouragement from a marriage partner uh, naturally leads to loneliness and resentment and anger, even despair and depression. Many times these feelings will lead us to act out sexually as a way as of, of fulfilling this, uh, this void. Uh, casual sex, you know, fornication and adultery, pornography, various illicit sexual practices, homosexuality, pedophilia, bestiality, all these things, you know, they become temptations. Remember that no matter how great the release and pleasure, these activities destroy your ability to find sexual fulfillment. They don't improve them. 
and that's why they're forbidden. God wants us to have the best and not the worst uh, sexual experience. The void created by sexual hunger can only be properly filled by God through prayer and worship and service, and He will lead us uh, to that peace uh, if we allow Him to. Another point, how do we keep this command? If you're married, if you're married, find the true road to sexual fulfillment. For married men, and I speak to men as being a man, when asked, uh, men usually complain that they, uh, they don't get enough sex. Uh, they don't do it the number of times that they'd like to, uh, whatever that may be. Uh, uh, the, these could be, or there could be uh, uh, um, uh, plenty of reasons for this. Perhaps the wife is less interested. Maybe there are some babies and uh, interfering with you know, everything that needs to kind of work together for a, uh, a good sex life. Uh, work, long hours, schedules, illness, all kinds of things that interfere with the normal uh, sexual activity within a marriage. One of the main reasons that men want more is because they think that more is better. More often, um, <laughs> having more will somehow be more satisfying to them. Uh, women don't think this way because, well, because they know better. Uh, and so in the search for more, men use all kinds of tactics. For example, uh, they, um, uh, they, uh, they use the, what's called the payoff method. You know? They trade for more by finishing the chores, by clearing up you know, the honeydews, by uh, buying flowers, uh, by saying something nice about her mother or something like that. Whatever, whatever works to get more. Uh, or they try the intimidation method. If the romance and flowers uh, pay off, uh, if that doesn't work, uh, then some men just sulk. Uh, they get quiet and pouty and angry. Anything to convey that you know, I'm not getting what I want. Uh, even uh, threaten uh, to quit the relationship. Um, uh, even pity. Uh, the, anything to, uh, to you know, get what they think that they, they need. And so if you're married, the surest way to more is to focus on the two things that your marriage is based on. The first is uh, exclusivity. The more you focus and work on and demonstrate the absolute exclusive nature of your relationship, the, the greater your desire for each other will grow. And that works both ways. This means that your eyes and your mind and your heart are openly and obviously focused only on her, only on him, uh, in private and in public. Uh, you become more desirable to one another when the quality of your exclusiveness to your relationship improves. And then secondly, longevity. In everything that you say and do, you need to demonstrate your lifetime commitment to your marriage. Uh, women need uh, reassurance uh, uh, that uh, uh, their husbands are, are focused on them, that their husbands uh, will be true, that their husbands will be there for them. Women need that reassurance and men need encouragement. They need encouragement that they're okay that they're still the one, that they're still you know, the, 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 the primary source of, of, of uh, uh, affection uh, for the wife. Yeah, this is, these are the types of things that individuals need in order to be ready and receptive for human uh, intimacy. Uh, the commitment is the wall that you build around the two of you that permits honesty and openness and, and, and freedom, especially when it comes to sexual matters. When, when men work on building exclusiveness and longevity in their marriage relationships, their sex lives naturally become better and more satisfying so that more is no longer um, an issue. Uh, a mature sexual relationship is no longer based on frequency, it's based on the depth and the power of feeling and the degree of satisfaction that the entire relationship produces for both uh, individuals. So this is uh, God's plan for human sexuality and His command is there to lead us uh, to, this, uh, to this end. Uh, remember, uh, you'll never be satisfied sexually if you break God's commands about human uh, sexuality. All right, so there's a very short little uh, discourse on the command that thou shalt not commit adultery. I'll give you a couple of questions to, um, to use uh, in your small group discussions and we'll see you next time. Question number one. 
Is it possible to maintain the early sexual excitement in a marriage throughout a lifetime? How? Question number two. What is the relationship between faith and sexual fulfillment? Question number three. What is your typical reaction when you are denied sexual fulfillment for whatever reason, whether you're single, your wife is ill, separation, etc.? Question number four, can a person be happy in a marriage without sexual intimacy? 